Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, sorry for the, the slight delay in starting the, the webinar. Um, we will today talk about a mostly risk management and, um, and volatility will be the concept, the core concepts we, which we'll, we'll talk about. The webinar is, uh, is titled Exploring the Coastline of, uh, of Foreign uh, Exchange Land. You will, you will understand uh, uh, what I mean here by, by coastline. By the way, it's not a, a concept uh, uh, which I have invented. It's, it's, a, it's a concept, uh, as we'll see, that is, is well known and it's, uh, it's a, a word that uh, can be used for, uh, for a, a certain kind of, uh, of volatility. Okay. Let's start with a, with a question. A question which is um, often used in, in in mathematics, and it's about the, the length of a coastline in a country. Okay. The the length of a coastline, or the, or the way to measure it, to measure it, is um, states that the, the the anything that you that has a a border or a, or a coastline. Can be told as having an infinite coastline if we measure it each time with a higher precision. Okay. The, the coastline is, uh, is any any object has several specific and effective dimensions, and the result of the calculation always depends on the relationship between the object. And the observer. As you see here, we can measure the coastline, the UK coastline, using several thresholds of 200 kilometer, of 50 kilometer, of 25 kilometer. And the smaller the threshold, the, the larger, the larger the coastline becomes. Yeah. If we would go um, on the coast, on the physical coast itself, with a meter, uh, meter by meter, or centimeter by centimeter, measuring all the coastline, all the rocks, the, the, the beaches, and all the, the small, the small uh, um, granulations in the in the rocks, then uh, obviously the, the coastline would would uh, go around the planet several times. Because of the, the proximity or the, the, the small threshold which we would be using to, to measure that, uh, that coastline. How this translates to, to financial markets or to, um, to, to price charts? Here we have um, in one price chart under, under different time frames, under different granulations, so to say. On the upper left corner, we see a daily pattern yeah, consisting of uh, three candles, three candlesticks, yeah. and the same movement observed under um, smaller time frames becomes larger uh, the more we go into smaller time frames. Yeah. When we get to 15 minutes or to one minute, we see the, the length that movement, if we take this line and we, we would stretch this line uh, from one point to the other, to the, to the end, from the start to the end, and the, the line comprising the, the one minute chart would be much, much longer than the one on the daily chart. But effectively, it's the same movement, right? It's the same, it's the same movement, but we have measured it in a, in a, in a much, much smaller granulation, and this is what we uh, uh, we are uh, we are calling here the, the coastline. Okay, this coastline can be um, or volatility as such um, can be measured in in different ways. We can 
we can measure the, the volatility between n days and the specific number of uh, of days okay on the this measures how prices moved from one point in time to another point in time independently of all the activity that happened in between all that activity in between is is ignored we just want to take the distance from one point to the to the other we may also measure the fluctuation um, during an n number of days and establish thereby a range yeah. this is a more significant measure of uh, volatility which is used as a estimation for risk but uh, it's not the measurement that is best suited to measure the potential rather than, than the risk another measure would be the average true range ATR in short this is the um, a measure which of the volatility in the different periods measured during a, a, a certain time span um, and averaged. This is the, perhaps the most uh, used uh, among uh, market commentators in the media uh, when referring to the, the volatility of a certain market usually it's uh, we are referring to the that average range that uh, a certain market is is displaying obviously here we have to state um, which parameters um, how how large is the sample that we are taking uh, to to um, to calculate that uh, that average and um, then we have another one which comes closer to the concept we, we will use in this uh, in this webinar, which is the sum of all the, the price changes, the absolute price changes, which is also called what we call here the, the coastline. Okay. This measure shows if the if the prices are more or less volatile uh, in those cases where the other measures um, doesn't show a, a very uh, telling number. In this case, this formula, this formula uh, becomes uh, useful to know if there is any subtle change in the market's character. Here, uh, the time, and the time is measured differently uh, in the sense that you start to measure time by events and events understood as movements similar to what uh, we see in a uh, price and uh, price and figure a uh, pointing figure chart right pointing figure chart is an, an old way to uh, to display price and uh, price structures, so to say, uh, it can be very convenient um, in order to condensate a lot of price action in a small uh, bi-dimensional area. You can condensate um, a large series of price uh, uh, numbers in a very small uh, chart. You can use uh, tick by tick data or minute minute, minute uh, data and condensate a lot of months and years in one same uh, chart capable of uh, of uh, being written in a, a small piece of paper and, and carried uh, home in your in, uh, in your jacket is uh, we have to understand this this type of charts came from the time where Obviously, there were no computers. This um, the, the earliest uh, notions of uh, pointing figure charts, uh, probably from the last century, end of last uh, century, uh, where um, 
uh, many of the negotiations uh, were were done um, on the go. Um, uh, you have you have to write uh, uh, the prices on a on a piece of paper and accumulate all the all the, the prices that uh, that were were transacted in in a paper. And this was uh, this was a convenient way to to get a, a price picture out of um, um, or a, a price structure out of uh, a series of negotiations, right? And uh, for those who, who don't know how a, a, such a, a chart is constructed, by the way, this is just an example. We will not move on with with pointing figure charts. Don't be scared. We'll we'll turn to to the more conventional charts. This is just uh, to, to to explain the the concept, the the pointing figure chart is constructed in a way that if we have a an upward movement by a certain threshold, by a number a certain number of, of pips in that case, um, then it we mark an X on the chart, and we continue marking X's on the same column as prices move. The same direction by the, the same amount of pips, without reverting but by uh, another specific number of pips. Usually, the parameters of a pointing figure chart is you you tell what is the box size, how many pips you want for the the box to represent. In this case, uh, it is defined as uh, 100, 100 pip. We can see above under the description is a 100 pip point box. And the reversal is one box, another 100 pip. If the, if the price goes 100 pip in the opposite direction, you have a new column. And in this case, it switches from an X to an O column, or vice versa. If it was going down, and you had a series of O's, then it um, switches to an X column. The reversal can be of uh, a multiple of the box size. It can be two box reversals, three box reversals, and so on. How does this relate with the, with the previous idea of this, this notion uh, of, um, of coastline? Here in, in this chart, we see arrows of different lengths um, to be more precise. And this is what the, the pointing figure chart does. We would have to use the same amount of tip for every time for each movement and count in this, in this fashion, right? So using arrows of the same length, so to say. And this is what we do here. And, and in pointing figure charts. Each time the market moves in one direction by, fifth, by 100 pip in this case, then we have an X or an O. The numbers stay, is, they stay for the, uh, the month, the month, the calendar month, uh, when that price was achieved, right? so that you have an orientation for time. But as you see in the, what would be the time axis below, it's not a regular time axis as we know it from other chart types, where each interval is the same. Here, the time is measured by events, by movements. Each time the market changes direction, we have a new column. If the market doesn't change direction in the amount that you predefined as your threshold, then the chart doesn't change direction, or even if there is no movement of the same amount as the threshold, as the box size, then there is no change at all in the chart. And then you, from here on, in terms of volatility, you can start to count the number of times a market moved 100 pip. If you count all the X's and O's, you have the amount of points that the market moves 100 pips, and you can get a sum of all the path comprising 
the price structure, all the, the distance, the coastline distance, as observed using the 100 pip threshold. And you get, you get the potential of what a market moves in a certain amount of time. Okay. And this is obviously uh, a, a figure that is usually in terms of uh, volatility, a, a very different figure from other measures of volatility because it is speaking about the potential of this market to move. Right? We will delve on this idea more and more and understand what we mean here by, by potential and how to capture that potential, which is the, the center idea of, the, of this monthly webinar, is to build the foundations for our trading model based on this concept of coastline. And based on a concept that the time is differently understood as in a normal uh, chart configuration or a conventional chart configuration. Okay. So far, um, is everything understood? Are are there some some doubts, some questions? We will have quite uh, a long uh, webinar. It's being a monthly webinar, um, it's, it would be good to have a sort of, uh, of interaction, and we will, we will have time to, to discuss uh, everything in, in detail. Okay, if there are no, no questions, I, I, I go ahead. Um, I move on. This is, um, I want to mention here, the sources, the conceptual sources of, uh, of based this um, this research I'm constructing here on the shoulders of others who have uh, obviously done a, a much deeper investigation into the, the field of, uh, of price action, of, of price behavior. One of uh, the sources is uh, Mr. Richard Olson from Olson Limited in collaboration with, uh, with the Center for Computational Finance and Economic agents from the University of Essex. Um, there is a uh, material that has been very useful in the understanding the, the concept of, uh, of coastline and, the, and the, the potential in terms of, uh, of price movement. Here we have a table where I've highlighted here under the euro dollar column and corresponding to the, to the threshold line 0.05 percent what does this mean is that if we measure the coastline as we have measured uh, with a pointed figure chart in thresholds of uh, 0, 0.05 percent then we would we would get a a coastline in percent percentage terms of 2000 311.6 in euro dollar uh, and on, uh, on a yearly basis. Okay. So one year of uh, euro dollar uh, price movement would have the potential for, for more than 2,000 or 2,000 um, percent. Euro dollar at 112, around 112, this would be more or less six, a six pip threshold. As we said before, uh, if we go down to smaller thresholds, then the coastline becomes larger. If we measure the coast, the, the, or if we take the thresholds of 1%, for example, would be around 120, 130 pips, uh, 140 maybe today, um, and so forth. Uh, the bottom row in, in, on this table, uh, 3.2 thresholds, 3.2 percent. Those would be movements of 380 pips. Okay, three movements of 380 pips in a row without a, a counter movement of the of the same um, of the same amount. Okay, and then we we have the potential percentage, the, the potential percentage. Uh, 
a coastline that a market can move um, in one year. Okay. The question here is: Can I capture from all this, from all this, uh, from all this percentage? Can I capture? Can I capture, for example, a three percent of two thousand three hundred and eleven? Can I capture only three percent from from this? In that case, three percent from two. 2,300 would be a, around a 10% annualized without without leverage, without uh, applied costs here. But we see that um, trying to capture a very small amount, a very small percentage of a, a big coastline is already, in terms of unleveraged results, is already a, a quite good percentage in a year. 10% uh, in a year, I, I could get that, those 10% only by trying to capture 3% of all the, the, the price movements um, in, uh, in the euro dollar when measuring, when measuring in 0, zero 5 uh, uh, thresholds. Okay, so uh, as you see, we are not trying here to going for to go for higher. Uh, and two digit numbers like trying to to do uh, 15 15 percent uh, uh, from a market that are only moves 20 or 25 a year taking the, the volatility as a, as an absolute range from high to low in, in the year but um, yes we are speaking of uh, of capturing a very small portion of a very a very large uh, movement of a very large movement and when I formulated this question, or uh, when I heard this question being formulated, you know, it was rather so. Um, uh, something uh, uh, captured my interest, obviously, because here we we are we are speaking of uh, a much more realistic uh, approach in number in, in the number of, uh, of potential. Uh, Potential which is being offered by a market, and the and the humble the humble uh, projections that you that you um, that uh, that you might capture. What is what we see now? Uh, we have a question here. What we are seeing here is is, is a table uh, of calculations uh, captured from the source, which is uh, stated below. Um, from Olson Limited, uh, it was a study about, um, about price movements, about intrinsic time. It was a concept. Um, one of the sources I've used for for this uh, research. I don't know if, if that was the if that was the question. I hope you are seeing the same as I am. You are seeing a table, right? I presume. I presume yes. Okay, so we we move. Okay, thank you, thank you. We move on, and uh, I mentioned here the, the the second the second source, um, which has um, more to do with um, the exercise that we will we will start uh, in a, in a moment, and with the concept of uh, of market timing. Versus time in the market. This is a, 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 a concept from uh, Dirk Dutois. Uh, he's a longtime collaborator of, uh, of FX Street uh, and, uh, and a mentor for, for many uh, retail forex traders. He has an ebook called Bird Watching in Lions Country. May I ask among the audience uh, how many of you know Dirk Dutois or have? Heard about him, or if you have also heard about uh, about Olson, Richard Olson, the previous uh, source I've, I've mentioned. Just, just that I, if you if if you are familiar with one of the two, just that I get an idea of uh, how familiar these concepts uh, can be to you. Raymond, Zwana says yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see, we had uh, here in FX Street, we had uh, a couple of um, a couple of uh, contests 
of uh, real money uh, trading contests back in, I don't know if it was 2007 or, or in 2010, around that time. Uh, most of the contests are done in, in uh, simulation mode, but at that time there were a few uh, which are, were done, in specific two, two of them were done uh, here at FX Street with, with real money. And uh, one of the things I remember that at that time was uh, that students from from Dirk de Trois, uh, um, were in the first places of uh, of both of the of the contest. Yeah, and um, for for all the other participants, it, it was very curious to follow how they traded because um, they seemed not to follow. Uh, the market in in terms of timing or um, uh, or waiting for the best setup and, and calibrating the, uh, the, the the position size um, exploiting you know, an over or over leveraging but instead they, they were trading in a very regular repetitive manner as if price really didn't didn't matter so much, the specific price at which they enter and exit was many times not as uh, corresponding to what all the others were doing. It was uh, not correlated in that in those terms. Uh, their orders seemed not to cluster where all the others uh, were clustering around with with their stops. Besides, they didn't trade uh, with, with a stop at all. Uh, used very very small uh, leverage, uh, and uh, by the end uh, they were by the end of the contest. The contest uh, was like a three-month contest, and they they were alive. And uh, not only they were alive, but they, they could also win the the, the contest. Uh, I think the first one was the, the first place was uh, one of his uh, students, and the second one. Uh, uh, I think they, among the first, the first winners uh, there were several people from uh, coming from uh, from the Dudois. He's perhaps not the, the most uh, uh, well-known mentor in the, uh, here at FX Street, um, but yes, uh, his contrib contributions were few, but uh, uh, of, a, of a very a very high um, quality. So now that you know the, the sources I've been uh, based this work upon, I want to uh, share with you an, an exercise, the first exercise to, to start uh, uh, going into the, this idea of, uh, of capitalizing on, on, the, on the coastline. What you, what you see here is a, a manual exercise. It was done between the years of 2009 and 2014, and uh, what what we see here in the in the arrows are 50 uh, trades displayed along the the, the, the time in 2009 2014. 50 50 uh, trades distributed uh, randomly. Yeah. They were distributed randomly and also. Uh, random was the choice if to buy or sell. Okay, and this was the uh, the distribution of the trades. You, you can do this by well, there are, there are some um, randomness um, coin toss uh, mechanisms in, on the web. You can you can throw in if buy or sell, and then and then yeah, you can also um, have a, a number. Um, and also generate uh, random numbers and, uh, between a, a time and between a, a price scale, and so you, you get this totally random distribution of uh, of trades. Okay. I did this on, on an Excel. Okay, um, by the color, if uh, if green or or red were the uh, where the the, the, the trades that were still open. At the at the end of the of the test, okay, we'll see this uh, in this in this next slide. Here is a, a few captures from the from 
the Excel um, Excel document where the where I display the trade. So each trade, what was done here. By the way, this was an exercise which is part of uh, the, the mentoring process from uh, from Dirk de Bois. And uh, here we see I displayed all the 50 trades and highlighted here is the trade number seven, which was taken on the 27th, 5th, 2010. And then we have the the, op the, op the open high, low, close prices, and also random was the choice at which price to open the trade, okay? Also randomly generated. Then we have an S for sell, which was also randomly generated. And then the exercise consisted of uh, measuring that random trade, measuring uh, with different take profits, measuring the result with different take profits, with a take profit of 30 pip, 50, 100, 200 pip, and 400 pip. Okay. You see it on the, on the upper right corner of, uh, of the screen. We have the, the, the duration of, of the trade in order to capture those 30 pips in terms of days, 0 0.2 days, to capture 50 pips, 3.1 3 day, also 3.1 day to capture 100 pip, and longer to, to take uh, to capture 200 pip, and in those cases where the, the the trade stayed open by the end by the end of the of the test, the time time span of the test, then I would stay open, and on the on the on the right I would state what is the floating uh, amount at that moment. Then we have the the, mass, the MAE is the maximum adverse excursion, that is the, the maximum amount of pips the price went against me before closing the before closing the trade. Okay, and we have here minus four for 30 pips, minus 124 uh, for 50, 100, and 200 pip, and minus 2,634. Uh, in order to uh, to capture the 400 pips, which in this case is, was not captured, uh, it's, it's, it, it recovered the floating, recovered from a, a mark, maximum adverse excursion back to uh, the floating of uh, 115, 118, uh, 118 negative. And then I measured different uh, stop possibilities, stop loss possibilities. Uh, I measured if the trade would have a stop, the same amount of pips than the target, in the case of 30, 30 pip target, a 30 pip stop, then I would uh, note if the stop was hit or not. If it was not hit, I would put an no. If the stop was hit, I would uh, put a yes, okay? So in order to capture 50 pip, would a 50 pip stop have been uh, triggered? Yes. Also, a, a 100 pip stop, but not a 200, a 200 pip stop. Three to one on the next uh, on the next uh, uh, row is a stop which is three times smaller than uh, the, the the take profit. Okay. This is the usual. Uh, the usual approach in in retail trading you should risk a third of what you aim to to capture uh, three to one is often we, we hear a lot of uh, this kind of uh, of approach of ratio between between uh, risk and reward so i wanted to include this just to to have the statistics based on a randomly generated trade um, would this kind of stop uh, perform better uh, or worse than other stops? Or how, uh, qualitatively, how would that kind of stop, three to one, uh, have uh, been, uh, um, uh, well, what kind of results would it, would it have uh, achieved? 
And then also uh, the inverse, one to three, one to four, means a three times larger stop than the take profit or four times larger stop than the, the target, right? And uh, I measured this for all the 50 trades, okay? And then um, we go down here uh, on, the, on the screen the, to the left side, and we have the, the average duration of the, of the hours, okay? The average day, we have the minimum duration and the maximum duration. And below, hi, uh, highlighted in, in pink, we have the, the maximum adverse excursion for each of the, of the take profits, okay? And curiously, we have for the 30, 30 pip target, we have a quite large maximum, average maximum adverse excursion of 135.3 pip. In turn, to capture 400 pip, we have also a larger, larger than 400 pip average, uh, uh, maximum average, uh, ex uh, uh, maximum uh, adverse excursion, but it is only of uh, 775 pip. If we do a, a ratio between the two, we see that um, the pain in terms of uh, MAE, the pain to get a higher uh, or a larger uh, target is less than the pain you have to support to go for a small target of 30 pip. Okay? You have to suffer uh, uh, more in terms of what the potential is, of, the re of what the reward is, than if, if you go for larger figures. Already this result starts to make our brain think in many things that uh, we have heard and we have experimented and, and read about um, in terms of, uh, of uh, strategies, in terms of, uh, of risk management. Okay. Something, something starts to, <clears throat> to capture our, our attention. If we go to the, to the right side, also highlighted in, in pink, we see here the, 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 the probability of a stop to be hit, yeah, a certain type of stop to be, to be hit, where, is the, where are the higher and lowest numbers? And obviously the highest numbers for each of the thresholds, for each of the, of the take profits from 30 to 400, we find the, the higher uh, frequency, or not the, the, yeah, the, the, higher, the highest number of, of stops uh, being hit is when we use a three to one. When you use a stop that is, which is three times smaller than the target, okay? When using stops which are four times the target, this is when we notice a very small amount of, uh, relatively smaller uh, amount of uh, stops being, being hit. And the larger we go, the larger the, the take profit, then we also the, the smaller the, the chance becomes of that stop to be hit. We have only 40, 14 percent of the stops for the 400, 400 um, targets being hit. Already, or again, this um, is trying to tell us a, a story which may be different from from what we have been told or what we had as a preconception of uh, what is possible to do in, in forex trading. Okay. And then below, on the bottom, we have the, the, the closed rate for each of the, of the targets. And we see that, interestingly, if we go only for safety pips, 
then there is a higher uh, number of trades being closed. 98% of the trades, of the 50 trades, which are, were randomly generated, were closed if we, we uh, went for 30 pip only, almost all the, almost all the trades. The, the first, uh, the second column where we see the larger numbers, and the third column where we see total open, is, um, these are the columns for the accumulated pips and the floating, the floating loss at the end, at the end of the test. Okay, we have accumulated 50 from those 50 trades, 90. 98% uh, of those were closed, and the sum gave us 1,470 pip. And then, but we had at the at the end of the test a floating of 1,271. 1, and this, the net result, the total net result, is uh, barely uh, 200 pip, 199 pip at the end of the test. Okay, where we have more accumulation of, of pips is obviously when we went for 400 pip trades, where we, we accumulated uh, a total of, uh, uh, of 1,500, uh, 15,200 uh, pips, and the total floating loss at the end was about 11,223, which gave us a net result at the end of the test of a positive 3,000. 977, almost 4,000 4, pips uh, 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 as the, the, the end result. Okay. Um, are there any questions uh, related to, to, this, um, to these calculations here or the, the conclusions which we could, uh, we could derive from, from this number? Was, was this understood? It's, it's an exercise. What strategy uh, can we use? Asks uh, Raja Arson. Uh, we will we will see now uh, how to build a, a strategy on on that. Okay, we go slowly, step by step, trying to build a trading model. Trying to build a trading model uh, that is. Uh, is based on, on this, okay? And this is what we, we start seeing here. Now, um, on this chart, this um, is, a, is a, a backtesting uh, platform, and we see here the, the same chart as we saw before. The same chart, the euro dollar, yeah, for the same period, the same period displayed here with a series of um, of operations, okay. And we see um, here we we did uh, the same we took the same amount of, of the same time span, and instead of generating um, random trades, we switched from the randomness to a Trading signal. We took a signal from an indicator, and we try to see if, if getting generating a signal from a from an indicator, if that changes the condition or changes any of the statistics significantly, so that we can conclude that any kind of signal is uh, better or worse than a randomly generated trade, yeah. and uh, obviously, in, in this case, we generated many more, many more trades than the 50. Okay, the the signal used here was more or less uh, discretionary choosing. We took a a, a Bollinger Band, and uh, if on a four-hour chart, and if the price had a close, a four-hour close above. The upper band, then we sold. If there was a close uh, below the, the the lower band, 
then we um, then we uh, we open a long term. Okay, basically that. Um, the end result is the fact that we have very similar uh, results as for the the duration of uh, of trades, as for the the, the amount of uh, accumulated dips in relationship uh, to the, the floating loss. Okay, so from here we could conclude. Mm, let's move on with the testing, but not not basing it on the signal itself. We don't want to to uh, the, for the signal to be the the, the key part uh, of the model, but we want to keep the idea of somehow the the randomness. Uh, the randomness of the of the, of the signal being uh, being generated, or any anything that is similar to to what we have in the in the in the, in the random in the random uh, test, because uh, finally we we understood that generating a signal just from one indicator is is almost as as random. Okay, there isn't. A, there is almost no edge, and this is also something probably you already reached uh, that conclusion with with your with your experience. But uh, one sole indicator and taking the, the signal it generates uh, by itself will will give you uh, uh, will give you the same results as a gen as a random as a random trade or a ra randomly generated signal. Okay, we. Took the same the same rules the same rules but uh, this time we applied a 30 30 pip um, take profit the previous one we went for 400 pip and in this case we we went for uh, for 30 pip slight gain and for the time period we choose. We started, I don't know, nine thousand or about, and we ended we ended slightly higher, at least it seems here, um, than we started. But uh, we were uh, higher than that, and then we uh, before the end of the study there was a severe a severe drawdown. The distance the distance between the balance and equity increased a lot, and that is always when the when the third we had to halt the the test, or to, to remain in the in the same time span as the as the first randomness test. Okay, okay from here uh, we had to move on, um, and we thought, okay, here it is clear that we may have made some money because of the price structure itself, which which is within the same range. So um, obviously you are closing most of the positions because the price. It's in a very big range, but uh, nevertheless a range. So um, obviously, if we would have a price which would have a much uh, steeper uh, angle of ascent or descent, a trend, uh, then things would be would be different. Um, in order to prove that, we choose another another market. We went here, uh, jumped from euro dollar to dollar yen, and we did the same testing. Okay, we did the same testing. And here we have all the trades uh, generated. We keep generating the signals here with uh, using the, the Bollinger Band signal just to have something that is like aleatory, not to generate aleatory the, the signal, but it's, 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 it would be the same as generating it uh, in an aleatory fashion. And we see the, the lines, the blue lines from one side to the other from one trend to the other those blue lines are the uh, the connection between the open and the close date so you see uh, that some of the trades lasted really 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 long yeah, to in order to be closed many other were closed within the a shorter time span but some of them not not a few not few uh, were were carried over a large number of, uh, of years we, we, we see some uh, some layers of trades. See on the bottom of the chart, for example, 
you have layers of traits in the green, the green uh, layer and the red layer. What is this? These are, uh, in that case, uh, cell, cell traits which never achieved uh, their take profits. The take profits would be the, the, the red layers. Okay. So those cell traits, um, short traits, which were never achieved their, their profits, um, where where are now at the end of the at the end of the period in a very bad shape because they're they are uh, carrying all these floating losses through time. Okay. If I can zoom the, the chart, not this one, but uh, I'll be able to, because this is a capture. Yeah, but I'll be able to to zoom uh, to zoom when we we will do some simulation of testing later on uh, in, on the, in the second in the second part of the of the session we will do that mm -hmm. here we have the um, the results in terms of, uh, of balance and, and equity and uh, we see um, I started in this case with a with an amount uh, of I think 10,000 and you see uh, the, the blue line uh, has some some walls and growth walls in it, uh, I had to do some extra deposits, cash deposits on, on, the, on in the in the account in order to sustain the, the, the drawdown. Yeah. And only so I could I could keep the, the equity more or less stable yeah and, uh, and and bring it to grow because of the of the accumulated uh, the accumulator or the, the, the additional uh, cash deposits. Um, in this case, I could have um, started with a bigger amount, or I could have used smaller lots. Yeah, and um, then I would have a different sort of uh, of curves here. Yeah, and um, and in the end, I would have known if uh, if I made made it, made money or or not. In in this case, uh, I was. Uh, less concerned with uh, the position size, less concerned uh, with the with the amount which better to start trading. I wanted to see the behavior, uh, the behavior of price uh, uh, when a position is carried, when a series of positions are carried into negative ground, um, how the, the equity curve uh, behaves, and it's is some, something that can go against you very, very, very fast, very fast. Yeah. And this is the, the reason why um, margin calls sometimes uh, come much faster than than we than we expect because towards the towards the end, when the end is, is near, uh, the end of our account being being smashed, then uh, it it's, it seems and in fact it does accelerate. Yeah, um, and we, we will see why. Okay, here. Um, okay, uh, Raja, here is a capture of uh, of, uh, of the one of the tests. Okay, because from here we we jumped we jumped to uh, uh, another test. Okay, we we jumped to another test and we said, okay, uh, let's change the pair. Uh, let's change the pair. And we'll, what we'll do here. Is in this case is the Australian Australian dollar, and in this case we will work differently. Um, we will build a grid on the price chart, yeah, a grid which will be used to to generate the the put rate. We will not use any signal from an indicator. We will not use um, a random uh, a random trigger, but we will yeah. insert mm, trades or orders along the time scale by a distance of 50 pip each. Uh, each 50 pip will put a an order. Better, we will put two orders, one buy and one sell, at each 50 50 pip interval. Okay, so that uh, you see here highlighted in yellow, 
on there is a list of uh, of trades, and you see there is a, a buy and a sell around the current price. One is in positive, yeah. one is in positive, the other is in negative. Okay, these are the, the trades that are close to the to the mark to the market price, and then above and below you will see floating losses. Below you will see all all the all the sell trades which were not closed, and above you will see all the buy trades which were not yet closed. Okay. The take profit for each trade is in in this case 50 50 pip. Okay, and the the stop loss the stop loss um, in this case I uh, for this for this test I didn't introduce yet a stop loss but I started to think about when to close the trade because it was obvious from the from the previous uh, experiments that at some time I had to close uh, several chunks of trades the concept of closing the trades here is changing from a technical one or a st strategical one in the sense that I, I will not choose a, a price based on support or resistance, maybe to close the trade or to hide my stop, or but I will close chunks of trades, groups of trades. Um, in what I'm trying to do from here on is to, man to manage the, the curves, to manage the equity curve and to manage the, uh, the, the, the balance. The, the balance curve. Okay. Yeah, Raja. Uh, here is uh, is no single no single indicator. Okay, just a grid. Just a grid with uh, uh, just a grid with with orders. Okay. In in five minutes, uh, we have to to, to wrap up. You know, you work a couple of things more, and then we, we will close the. The first, uh, the first part of the of the webinar, and move on to the to the to the second one. Here we already see uh, how the price uh, is triggering the all the trades. We see a section here of a, uh, price behavior, yeah, and uh, how the, 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 the open and close prices. We see the the blue lines are. Connections between the open and the close of the trade, and we, we see how the trades are are closed, are open and closed uh, along with movement. And here we uh, we have to remember the idea of coastline, okay? Of coastline, and of um, we remember also the idea of capturing all the intervals of that of that price movement. Yeah, we want to capture. Uh, all the movements the price is, do is doing in a specific parcel. We are using, in this case, we are using 50 pip. Obviously, the smaller we go, the less trades we will we would trigger. The bigger the, the, the amount of the distance between the, the trades, the less trades we will trigger, and the shorter the shorter the the coastline. Okay. So here we see how prices is capturing the, the uh, and below we, we see the, the both curves okay we see the the balance the blue line the balance and then below uh, we see the the, the equity okay, how it goes up and down okay and on the bottom we see the margin which we start to think about margin about risk how much what is the, the amount of capital that we are that we are risking at a certain moment? Obviously, we won't do this without uh, consuming all the margin because then we would have a, a margin call, right? Okay. And the what we are seeing on the on the upper chart corresponds to the the, late, the later part of the of the of the bottom chart where the red arrow is from there to the right. Corresponds to the so the more lateral move we have, the more lateral move we have, the better it is to accumulate 
uh, profits and for the for the lines for the the, the, the balance line to uh, act as a magnet for the equity line and, and finally to accumulate to accumulate profit okay we will wrap up the the, the session here okay and uh, we will uh, um, start uh, soon the the second part where we will see much more much more in in detail all the all the, the trading model based on on the coastline thank you for, for your attention see you in the premium section uh, in, a, in, a, in a short time